Hello and welcome if you're new to my channel and if you're a subscriber, a warm welcome back. I am incredibly excited to be recording this video. It has been a long time in the making. I've been wanting to make it for the last six months, but I had to wait until after I came back from Paris and I only managed to make it to Paris um, fairly early on in 2023. And what really heightened um, the moment, the excitement and wanting to create this video is once I put together my collection of totes that I wanted to look at in Paris, I had to look at the two totes that dominate the coated canvas space, the Neverfull from Louis Vuitton and Saint Louis from Goyam. And I had to really look at them in detail so I could compare and contrast with the other uh, totes that I wanted to introduce into the fold. And when I realized just how flimsy and basic a construction the Saint Louis tote is, I was, I was stumped to say the least, uh, but I felt a sense of duty, a sense of loyalty to my viewers to do something about it. I could either put up and shut up and say it is what it is, or put together a strong selection of totes to rival the Saint Louis and um, the Neverfull totes because they dominate the space, but they're not necessarily the best. There are other brands that are better in terms of design alternatives, the quality, the added features and so forth. And so, this is a video I've really enjoyed putting together. I hope you enjoy it. And for all those people who said they're looking for totes, I hope you find something you like. I'm Anasu Sagonda, and I produce educational luxury content for anyone after the finer things. Whether you're new to money and wanting to learn how to navigate the terrain, you're into luxury, but you want to focus more on quality, under the radar brands or you're young and starting out in life and wanting to reap the benefits of buying quality then my content is geared towards you the neverfull and san louis totes dominate the coated canvas space because they both come from brands they're owned by brands that have incredibly strong brand equity. Brand equity is the added premium that's added for the perceived value. And in this case, um, the high brand equity. Neverfall is owned by Louis Vuitton, which is the darling brand within the stable of over 70 brands owned by Louis Vuitton Moe Hennessy, the largest luxury group in the world. So there's a lot of money that's um, put into their marketing. Both of the totes, the Neverfull and the Saint Louis, I see a lot of, and I'm seeing increasingly more of the, the Saint Louis one, but I still see a lot of um, the Neverfull one. Saint Louis owned by Goya. Goya, another brand with incredibly high brand equity, but it's an interesting one because it's a brand that doesn't do any marketing. It's incredibly elusive. Um, the brand are quite aloof. Um, you just, you cannot get any information from them. And I, I struggle to, to learn anything new about the brand and they won't give anything away and that is where the appeal comes for goya that it's incredibly elusive they talk about their quality and exclusivity and people really buy into that they've built up a lot of hype around um, their aloofness and they're doing incredibly well but when i look at the san louis tote um, i'm not going to group into this their handbags it's a product that could be a lot better. And it made me realize that Goya are charging a phenomenal premium for their um, for the tote because they have incredibly high brand equity. People have very high value. They place high value in the brand. And so they're really capitalizing on that. And they're giving you an incredibly basic product. It's almost like they're throwing crumbs at the consumer and the consumer is lapping up those crumbs because they're buying into that whole Goya and what it means to them. The Neverfull tote, um, I actually prefer. Um, it's a much better tote in terms of what you're getting, um, thicker material, for example. So the tote has uh, two pieces of material. You have the, the outer coated canvas piece where you have the the painted monogram or whatever the design may be and that's really thick it's fairly substantial and i was quite surprised at just how thick it is and then the inside is fabric lining the rest of the tote um you have the the straps long straps you also have the edge all with um leather trimming 
And then you also have as added features on the outside, you have two uh, laces so you can pull the bag in and you're able to close it. On the inside, you have against one of the walls, you have a zipped pocket. And then you also have um, a detachable pouch that you can zip that has a zip that also comes with the tote. Three size options and they range in price from about £1,360 through to £1,450 for the biggest size. Um, the San Luis tote from Goya, it's made from um, a material, a cloth that's a mixture of cotton, there's linen, I've been told there's also hemp. And then the outside is coated with resin. It's incredibly flimsy, it's very thin. And I actually had to go into two separate Goya stores just to get confirmation that they tell me it's two pieces of material joined together. Whereas I think it's one piece of material. It's a very, very thin piece of material. And the brand on their website state it's hard wearing, it's flexible, it's waterproof. Waterproof, flexible, yes. The hard wearing part, I'm not so sure about. Tote comes in two sizes um, and they're priced from between 1000 uh 210 euros for the smaller size. The bigger size is 1,345 euros. Um, I think if I've made a mistake, I will include the correct prices just below. And then uh, you just have the resin on the outside. On the inside, you have a detachable pouch that comes with it, with the zip as well on top. And you don't have anything else inside except just the coated canvas. You have the leather detail from the straps and the leather trimming on top. Um, other than that, that's all you get with the tote. Incredibly flimsy. The walls are not structured, unlike the Neverfull and all of the other totes that I'll be recommending. So those are the two totes that I will be uh, working off and comparing um, with the six that I'm going to recommend. I'd have liked to have added a seventh tote, but unfortunately the seventh brand um, currently doesn't have a standalone store in Paris. Uh, but I will talk about them in a, leather in a later video and I may compare them to possibly the Saint Louis as well. I'll, I'll see which brand will work, but I'll talk about the seventh brand um, at a later time. The first tote is the Camille tote from Le Tanner. Le Tanner is a heritage brand founded in 1898. I particularly like heritage brands uh, because they've been around for a long time because it's a testament to their quality, the craftsmanship. And Le Tanner uh, produce a selection, a, a fantastic selection of entry-level leather bags as well, which I'll talk about in a later video alongside Maison Pochet and also Pollen. The Camille Tote comes in two size options. The smaller size, priced at 249 euros. Slightly bigger size, uh, you're looking at 299 euros. Uh, coated canvas on the outside um, in the signature T motif design. Inside is blue fabric lining. Um, it's a lightweight resistant tote. Edge trimming, a uh, leather trimming on around the edges and also the straps. I particularly like the straps because they are on the wider side in terms of the width and also the thick. Uh, a lot of brands are producing handles that are fairly thin around a centimeter, a centimeter and a half, whereas these are over a centimeter and a half. And so the heavier the tote is, the more comfortable it typically will be on your shoulder. It won't dig in like you get, for example, with the thin straps, which can make it fairly uncomfortable. Tote also comes with a removable zipped pouch, and it also has a zip on top as well. Um, an added security feature, you can close the tote. But I don't particularly like it because it inhibits what you can put into the tote. Uh, you can't put in tall items, for example. And also the design feature of the tote means that where it's attached, it also limits what you can put on the, the, the side that it's attached. But otherwise, that's a design feature that I pers personally am not keen on. I typically go for open toes. You can get more in. It's easier to maneuver in and out. But in terms of the quality of the leather, the craftsmanship, it's fantastic. It's as good as it's going to get for the entry level. Um, it packs a mighty quality punch um, and you won't get a cheaper tote that's better than the Camille tote. The second is Delage. Delage, very similar to Le Tanner, another heritage brand from 1905. Both are brands that operate very much under the radar. You will hardly hear of them, more so Delage. 
Delage is an automobile inspired brand. First started producing um, automobile products, seat covers, uh, steering wheel covers, for example, in leather, and then they increase their range of products over time. And you'll see a lot of their heritage inspiring current designs. They do produce a fairly wide selection of handbags, which I hope to take a look at next time I'm in Paris, hopefully schedule permitting. But with their tote, the Lulu tote, it comes in three sizes, priced from 460 euros for the cheapest and the biggest size is 550 euros. Uh, come in varying shades of either gray, blue or brown. I really like the design. Um, it's very easy to wear, it's mature, and it's a design, it's an original canvas design from 1927. You're also getting a lot of features with the uh, Lulu tote. Leather trimming around the edges, leather straps as well. And what you will notice, a major heritage feature uh, on the straps that where they are attached, you have um, the, the leather shaped into the grill feature that you see from 1905 when they first started the brand. And it's a grill feature you see in their handbags and their totes. Um, and in subsequent products that they produce, they'll always be linked to the grill. Um, that is the original feature of the brand. And then um, it's the canvas on the outside, inside fabric lined with red, fa uh, red fabric um, in the totes. And you get quite a bit in this tote in terms of you have on one side a zipped pocket. And then on the other side, two pockets that are open. You don't get a pouch, but you do have the three pockets in there as well. And of course, as I mentioned, uh, the leather straps and the leather trimming around the tote. The third tote is the Daily Battle Tote from Four Lepage. It's a brand I've been asked a lot about. It's a French brand that was founded in 1717. And when the brand was first founded, they were focused on producing um, hunting guns as well as hunting leather apparel for the royal family. They've since stopped producing the guns and they're now only focused on producing leather goods. But what you will notice distinctly about the brand is that their products are heavily influenced um, by their heritage. So for example, the Daily Battle Tote, uh, the name, the gun to past, um, the scale pattern, the signature scale pattern throughout the tote. It comes from the scale pattern that was sculpted into the gun handles so that when they were placed on the shoulder, the sculpted pattern gave the gun grip on the shoulder. And you see that throughout uh, the Daily Battle Tote. What you'll also notice with the Daily Battle Tote is their smutterings of the color yellow throughout the tote. Um, when it comes to ultimately choosing the end product, you have the option of either buying a tote that has um, handles that are the same color as the body of the tote, or you can get a tote that has yellow edge piping on the handles um, just to bring out the smutterings of yellow throughout. The daily battle tote comes in four sizes. Cheapest retails are for 1,050 euros. The biggest size is 1,450 euros. You also get one zipped variation and then you also get a limited edition variation of the daily battle tote that doesn't have the smutterings of yellow throughout and it only comes in one size 35 centimeters and i think 35 centimeters is also the same uh, for the zipped option coated canvas on the outside inside is um, a fabric lining and then on the one of the walls of the bag you have a pocket but it's not zipped and the bag doesn't come with a detachable pouch. On the outside, you have additional features uh, that uh, none of the other totes have. So for example, the reinforced corners, and then you also have an adjustable strap that comes with hardware attached to it. Also on the bag, you have a tassel added to one of the straps, which you can toss onto the other side, and it closes the, the tote as well for you. It's a lightweight tote that's water, stain resistant, comes in a selection of colors and heavily inspired by the brand's heritage, which you'll see in their handbags, which I hope to see um, next time I'm in Paris, again, schedule permitting. But the, they've tried to turn the, the sordid nature of the guns, the past that people are up in arms and people talk about whenever I ask people about Fort Le Page, and they've tried to make good um, producing the leather goods now, but with reference to the brand's past. 
The fourth tote is the Colette tote from Pinel et Pinel, a brand that was founded in uh, 2004. Comes in two sizes. Smallest size is 1,090 euros. Bigger size is 1,190 euros. Outside is co uh, coated canvas. You have uh, the leather trimming around the edges, the straps as well. And then on the inside, which is very different, and no other brands are doing this, is the buttery soft calfskin lining, making the uh, tote incredibly thick. The thickness of it reminds me of the Neverfull. So you have the thick uh, coated canvas of the Neverfull and then the fabric lining. But then with Pinel, you have the coated uh, canvas on the outside, which is average. And then on the inside, the buttery soft, thicker leather lining gives uh, overall thicker walls to the Colette tote. Putting it on par with the Neverfull, cheaper than the Neverfull, but you're getting an elevated product with the calf skin on the inside. Also comes with a removable pouch attached with a thin piece of uh, leather. This really stood out for me because when I looked at the tote, the thin piece of leather that attaches the detachable strap unfortunately makes the overall tote look cheap. The tote on its own looks fantastic, but that thin piece makes it look cheap. And for me, it's a deal breaker. If I was to buy the tote, I would remove that thin piece and get a more substantial piece of leather that's thicker, that's wider, uh, but that would be an additional expense and the tote is already over a thousand euros. But when people ask me, does something look expensive or cheap? The Pinel de Pinel Colette tote looks fine, but the thin piece of leather makes it look cheap. The fifth tote is the old tote from Moina. It has the signature original design from 1920. Comes in three size options. Um, the smaller size, 815 pounds. Larger size, 1,200 pounds. And it's a tote that comes with um, the coated canvas on the outside. There's another layer in between uh, the coated canvas, canvas on the outside, a, a second layer, and then a third layer on the inside is the a thick, robust canvas. That's 50% cotton and 50% linen. Edge, edges of the tote lined using full grain cowhide. The straps as well are full grain cowhide. And the inside exactly the same as San Louis in that it's plain. There aren't any pockets or any additional features on the inside. Bag doesn't come with uh, a detachable uh, pouch. You can buy that as an extra feature for about 200 uh, pounds. But when it comes to a direct comparison to San Louis, then the old tote from Moina is it in terms of uh, coated canvas, plain on the inside, exactly the same, but the difference is day and night. The old tote is considerably thicker. It's a superlative product in comparison to the San Louis Goyard tote. Uh, the only difference is you need to buy an additional um, pouch with the old tote uh, and that's about 200 pounds and it would still make it um, cheaper than the San Louis tote and you're getting a much better product from Moina. You also have the option for of free personalization and at the moment until end of February you have a limited edition uh, white version of the bag currently available at Le Bon Marché. In Paris. Once that's gone, it's gone. It won't be available online. So if it's something of interest to you, snap it up now. And then the sixth tote is from Moreau, the Saint-Tropez tote. Comes in three size options, smaller size 690 euros, the bigger size um, 800 euros. The bag comes with the signature Moronette uh, on the outside. It's the signature design, which is the intertwining wicker stem. You have the grey cowhide uh, trimming around the edges, the straps, they double the thickness um, of the other straps, double thickness, very similar to the thickness of the straps of the San Louis as well. But what you get with um, the Saint-Tropez is a zippable pocket, which is waterproof on the inside. And you also have a clasp on top so you can close the tote. Similar to the old tote from Moina in that it has really thick canvas, so it will be a direct competitor to the San Louis as well. So that's six totes, 
all very different with their own merits. You have the Colette Tote, very similar in terms of the thickness, a more sumptuous product to the Neverfull. You have direct competitors to the San Louis, I would say very confidently, the Saint Tropez Tote from uh, Moreau. You have the O Tote as well from Moina. But regardless, all six uh, totes I've spoken about are different. They're bringing in variety, a number of different features, depending on your lifestyle, your taste, your budget, of course. I think you're spoiled for choice, but I'm biased. But um, this is a selection, a strong selection of totes offering credible competition to the Neverfull and the San Luis tote. Any other questions as always, let me know in the comments down below, but thank you for watching. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon.